Hello and welcome to this episode. I have been trying to record this video now for I think this is like take number 37. <laughs> um, yeah, these things don't always flow real easy. Sometimes I try too hard and it just doesn't come across well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk to you the way I want somebody to talk to me. Yesterday I made a video talking about, I'll show you real quick here, Emmy, Emmy CFS Clin Specialty Clinics. And this particular one was Bateman Home Center Non-Refundable Deposit. And in this video I talk about the different predatory red flags that often can happen within these clinics. Um, one of the things that these clinics are notorious for is this thing called a non-refundable -re deposit fee. Let me go back here to my camera. And these fees are in addition to any services provided. These fees do not cover your consultation. These fees do not cover your visit. These fees do not cover anything. And what's more, you cannot be seen by a provider of these specialty clinics until you've handed them a minimum of $2,000 with zero guarantee that when you walk in the door, they're going to do anything more than just say, we're not open today. I mean, that's the guarantee. They really don't have to do anything. They don't have to promise you anything. You've handed them $2,000. Now, is that what Bateman Home is doing? No. But they are requiring you to pay them in advance before they do anything. And a lot of times when you get to these specialty clinics, it doesn't take long for you to realize, I've been hoodwinked. I'm trapped. Because every test they're doing, every test they're running, every moment they're spending with you that does not meet insurance payment qualification is billed directly to you. It's not uncommon for a person to walk out of one of these clinics after the first appointment and in addition to the two thousand dollars they've already spent they may have three to five thousand more that's now owed. Like I said, Bateman Home, I, they, they put out some really neat stuff. They do. I disagree with this approach. You know, what bothers me, and as a patient, I can relate to this. When you become sick, when, when you know, you become sick literally overnight for many people, kind of like somebody that's had a stroke. You went to bed, you woke up, you got a problem. Well, for many patients... They are under extreme duress by all sides. You know, the good thing about a stroke is at least it shows up on an x-ray or an MRI. People with ME-CFS don't have that luxury. So many of the people who are seeking out these clinics are doing so because they are under extraordinary duress and pressure by the people around them. You know, if you've had, just, let's just, for the fun of it, say you had a stroke. And just imagine, this is an analogy, you've had a stroke. And you got your in-laws over here saying, you better get better or we're going to take your kids. You got your husband or wife over here yelling, you, you got to get back to work. I need more money to spend. You got your employer saying, why the hell are you not at work? You had a stroke, so what? People with MECFS, neurotoxic encephalopathy, know exactly that scenario. Many of the people who then are in a situation like that feel they have no option but to seek somebody who will confirm for them what is going on. The sad thing is much of what comes out of these clinics is not recognized by the medical community. You know, you, you can come out of there with a tilt table test that came out of your pocket, by the way. 
and you can give it to your neurologist. See, I'm sick. And your neurologist can take it and throw it in the trash can. You think that doesn't happen? It happens all the time. See, neurologists are notorious for not like to be questioned. Especially by places that specialize in certain conditions. That target certain conditions. Many of these centers are using a medical predatory exploitation of a patient. They have identified a group of people. And now you've seen many of these clinics are going towards long COVID. Because all of a sudden long COVID people, there's a whole new pool of people we can tap into and take advantage of. Most of these clinics wouldn't know the difference between chronic fatigue and chronic fatigue syndrome. At all. A lot of these clinics truly believe chronic fatigue is wear and tear, getting older. They believe it's a mental health issue. But they present it as we're experts in chronic fatigue syndrome. We're experts in myalgic encephalomyelitis. We know all about it. We can cure you. We can fix you. We can help you. We can write you a private label prescription. We can give you private label supplements to take. Oh, and by the way, that's part of the requirement as well. You have to take our supplements in order to be part of the, to remain part of the program. That's another thing people don't realize. When you go into many of these clinics, they are hooking you. You see, as an individual, you have got to agree to do what they advise you to do. Otherwise, you're classified as uncooperative. And that bill just keeps ringing up, ringing up, ringing up, ringing up. Ching, 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 ching. For most people, by the time they leave, you know, six months after these appointments, they're absolutely no better, if not worse off, than before they even started. How many of us know people who have driven halfway across the country to go to one of these clinics and within 10 minutes of going in the door, they realize, I've been screwed. You know, they did this because people who meant well pressured them to do so. They found this information on the internet. Oh, this clinic can cure you. Oh, this clinic, they believe what's wrong with you. Oh, this clinic, oh, the you go there, you do the stuff. But in the back of your mind, you're like, these people are just, they don't, you know, that's the beauty of it. When you go into some of these clinics and you have the condition, you realize pretty quickly, these people haven't got a clue what true MECFS really is. And that's the problem. A lot of these people who are running these clinics themselves have never actually been sick with it. They've learned about it. They've read about it. They've seen an opportunity. You know, just imagine, okay, if a lawyer did this. Imagine if a lawyer said, you know, you got, let's just, for the fun of it, okay, a cop beat you and hurt you. And you did nothing wrong. But for the lawyer to see you, you got to first give them a $2,000 fee. And before you walk in, and as soon as you walk in, that they reach over onto their little machine and the timer begins. And every single half hour, $230, $230, $230. And then if they need to have documentation sought or this sought or they have to talk to another lawyer, all of a sudden the fee just keeps going up and up and up. Well, that's what these MECFS -E clinics 
oftentimes are doing. They are charging you for a, they are charging you this upfront fee that's non-refundable with zero guarantee of anything. You know, at least a lawyer gives you a free consultation. I'm going to show you some. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I showed you this yesterday. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of stuff here. But we talked about this yesterday. A minimum of 25%, but not less than $500 of a new patient fee is due. before you are given access to the medical profile portal. This is a non-refundable deposit. The remaining balance of a new patient fee must be paid two weeks prior to your first appointment. Now, as people who are on Medicare, SSI, SSDI, Medicaid, there are certain protections for us they may not bill people may not bill you over what the contract says between the medical provider and the the group paying the bill special finance circumstances individuals with special finance circumstances or are receiving benefits from a federal or state program, SSDI, SS Medicaid, may request a consultation with the business office to determine eligibility for a sliding scale reduction of the membership fee. Under the law, like I said, I'm struggling a little bit today. It has always been my belief that this practice of membership fees for specialty clinics, for any clinic, should not be allowed. They should not be allowed. They should be federally outlawed. When you are under duress and you go to these clinics, When the state is threatening to take your children because you haven't been able to provide for them, you're under extreme duress. You do things, your depression, your anxiety, you do things out of desperation. That is not a person who should be forced to decide between paying a $2,000 plus dollar fee or losing their children. Morally to me, that is despicable behavior. As you notice, I don't charge anything. Never will. If you give a rat's ass about somebody, you help them somehow, some way. Let me show you some and I'm not support I'm not have nothing to do with this so I just found this one this morning on the internet okay there's this clinic called MECFS Clinic Minnesota we are a 501 c3 free clinic dedicated to improve healthcare e equity 
to Minnesotans with the MECFS caused by long COVID, post-viral syndrome, or other physical mental triggers. We hope to advance the cause of MECFS so more medical providers, families, and neighbors can understand this disease and their loved ones who are suffering from it. Now that is who we are. Let me go here to mission. See if that doesn't show up here. That was the mission one. Okay, here it is. As a free clinic, we do not charge patients or their insurance for medical visits. We believe that everyone with MECFS and long COVID should have equal access to medical care regardless of their ability to pay or their access to health insurance. Consequently, this clinic relies solely on donations to make ends meet. Donations pay for our doctors, medical license, and training. Your donations will keep this clinic running and allow us to reach more MECFS and long COVID patients who traditionally have not had a voice in their own healthcare system because their doctors, family, or friends do not believe that they are actually truly sick. Your donations will also help educate more clinicians about this disease so they can diagnose and treat MECFS correctly. It is our vision to make a difference in these patients' lives. We hope you will join us. Now, like I said, I just found this one five minutes ago. That's an honorable group. Yeah, I've always liked those type of organizations. I will support that organization. If places like Bateman Home approach things like that, they could bill me every month as a donator. I would be happy to donate to them every friggin' month. If they approach things in that way. And I know a lot of other people that would as well. Because they're putting them they're they're putting the patient first. This is not predatory medical exploitation. But I can't say that about other places. Because when you are a person who is under extreme duress, because you're about to lose your family, your children, everything, simply because you became sick through no fault of your own, and you give us $2,000 plus dollars or else, I don't care how damn good your information prints off. You're not somebody I'm going to give a penny to. Folks, please be careful. Please be extraordinarily careful. There are people that are ex are seeing you based on MECFS, based on long COVID. Not as a patient, but as a target. Till next time, be safe, be smart, be careful. Do not hate the messenger, and more importantly, do not believe what the messenger is, what I am telling you, what this idiot is telling you, without doing your own homework. Thank you.